Hello my friends, this is Wolfgang with Tools for Ascension and uh, my gift to you is this video about clearing stuff with your mother or in other words karma clearing. So after commenting on some of the most important child mother dynamics we will be having a guided meditation uh, starting at that time below in the video. Uh, so also please accept only the information that resonates with you and understand that my knowledge comes from 40 years of intense spiritual study, practice and uh, several thousand past life regressions. You know, where I explore and help uh, to clear, you know, the root causes of my clients' issues. You know, and uh, yes, I do uh, personal Skype sessions. Uh, just send me an email. And um, so in general, you know, I would say uh, that all of the people you have karma with, you know, you probably have the most with your mom, your dad, and you love, you know, your partner, your sweetheart. Uh, it can be quite shocking, you know, when you find out that in past lives, you know, we had cursed, raped, killed, and betrayed, and even sacrificed, you know, vampired, you know, and in many cases magically bound, you know, our closest loved ones, or that they have the same, you know, done to us. It's suddenly back and forth. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, once you find out, you know, it explains <laughs> many uh, family dynamics in hindsight. Uh, but uh, let us just get back, you know, to the mother-specific issues, you know, that I found. You know, and first of all, um, you know, your mother, you know, uh, gives you, like, a baseline, you know, for your emotions. So when we incarnate, our first experience, you know, of 3D or, or bonding, you know, is, you know, in the mother's womb. You know, if mother is depressed or stressed, you know, like probably most teenage moms uh, probably are, you know, or any pregnancy or wedlock, uh, then that becomes, you know, in a way, the new normal for the baby and uh, many of us were unwanted and also you know experienced initial hostility many times you know through nursing and you know other hormones uh, there is a bonding but initially there's also a lot of hostility <coughs> and i mean honestly just today i had a case case of a mother influence is like uh, so my uh, great uh, grandmother so she had eight boys in a row and so she really wanted to have a girl so the last one you know she initially dressed him as a girl and you know also treated him as such and so this uh, great uncle turned out to be a very effeminate man. 
uh, you know, probably complying with the expectation of his mother. So besides, you know, projection from the mothers, and there are so many, you know, I mean, oh, you should become a doctor or uh, a lawyer, you know, something prestigious, <laughs> or whatever expectation, take over family business, right? There are lots of expectations and projections on the kids from the mom. Uh, many times the mom wants the kids to live out her own dreams, hmm? which of course many times has nothing to do with the purpose of the life of the children. So <coughs> another really big factor, you know, in relationship with your mother is, you know, the birth trauma. I mean, really, really big factor. And, uh, you know, birth trauma is considered you know, uh, one of the biggest uh, traumas in your life. You know, it's like the death of your mother, maybe even worse. Yeah. And uh, so uh, there are, you know, Stanislav Orff, and, uh, you know, there, what are those people, hodotropic breath and uh, rebirthing. You know, there are two uh, practices, and you can check this out. Uh, you know, and they're found uh, that birth trauma leads to uh, depression, you know, actually manic depression in a puberty. And I can uh, personally attest to this. Uh, you know, just look at my, the Hugo's Wolfgang video, my autobiography, where I talk about this. And also, you know, most psychologists will agree that during the first seven years of your life, you know, we get some of the deepest core programming. And mother is probably the closest to us, just according to time spent together, you know, and when there was nursing, uh, <laughs> you know, and so on. You know, there are a lot of influences there. And, of course, um, you know, then another really well-known fact is that there is a lot of transference, you know, or projection going on, you know, from that we have from our mother you know, to, let's say, our wife when we are male. Um, generally, you know, with females, you know, it's from the daddy, you know, to, to the husband or to all men. So, but, you know, for, for boys, you know, it's generally a projection from the mother to the wife. Uh, men marry their mothers, you know, it's the saying. So, well, in my case, uh, my mom was a Gemini and so is my wife. And also, my poor wife had to take a lot of heat for my mother. So, it comes with the territory, right? And uh, we also, you know, tend to transfer, you know, our relationships with our mothers to the goddess principle. And then, ultimately, you know, the whole world. So, you know, when your mom abandoned you, you know, you may uh, feel, you know, that you're also abandoned by the uh, great mother principle, you know, the mother nature or the world that takes care of you. Mm -hmm. And I also find in my work that we generally have huge past life karma with our mother and father figures. I mean, so many times, you know, we find that there was rape, murder, enslavement, incest, lots of incest, torture, you know, lots of curses, and of course, you know, uh, a lot of angry, you know, stuck ghosts uh, that come with their trauma. You know, any time there is a lot of trauma, uh, there are a lot of ghosts <laughs> uh, that just uh, comes, you know, and uh, so this uh, will have to all be cleared. And uh, so you will have to see for you, you will have a chance to see for yourself in the God of meditation, you know, whether I'm exaggerating or not. I'm just preparing you a little bit. Right? So um, also I would like to talk a little bit about child care, you know, the way I, you know, think is best. I mean, I have my own uh, son, you know, that I brought up. Uh, so. You know, I'm not an armchair philosophy, so to say. So, 
in my perspectives is a little bit of the beaten path so just consider maybe it makes sense you know just consider so um, n you know in my opinion one should nurse the baby you know as long as it wants you know in Vedic uh, times you know this was I think it's a Vedic principle in Hinduism it's kind of understood uh, you know I mean personally I think it's great for a bonding um, because you know when the baby nursed you know all kinds of pleasure hormones are released in the mother as well as in the child you know the heart chakra opens uh, there's love you know flowing you know from the heart chakra you know over the breast you know into the breast milk into the baby and you know when the mother you know smiles and the baby smiles you know there is uh, a big flow of love and of course the um, beautiful hormones um, come with that and you know when people together you know get high you know they're, they're bond whether it's you know whatever uh, you experience when those hormones release you know this is an imprinting so this is uh, quite important and uh, of course uh, you know besides bonding um, you know there's also you know a nutritional aspect and I mean you can't tell me that a formula has the same nutritional balance as well as the chi as well as the let's say genetic proximity <laughs> that you can get with breast milk you know I mean well uh, I think there are a lot of uh, studies on this so uh, also, you know, again, this chi transfer, you know, that is uh, between the mama and the baby, uh, you know, leads to a healthy immune system. Uh, you know, uh, the more chi or life force or ki or will um, is being, you know, transferred into baby, of course, you know, the healthier and, you know, happier it's going to be, right? And another important thing, so newborns, you know, and small children are super sensitive. They don't have like a covering, you know, over their chakras and there is not such a strong force field that protects them. And so they're super sensitive, you know, they're very open, you know, you can compare this to being high on LSD, you know, where you feel the emotions of a tree or of a person, you know, you feel the anxiety of a junkie from across the street or you know the, the drug dealer you know the brutality that he has to muster up you know and uh, so you're very very sensitive as a baby and um, so it's quite important to keep the baby in your own force field you know I mean as a father or mother doesn't matter you know um, so as much as possible you know, in Aboriginal cultures, you know, the babies, you know, kept, you know, close in the mother's uh, environment, you know, just uh, in front of the body or in a backpack kind of situation. And the baby actually sees what's going on. It is part of daily life instead of sitting in a box, you know, staring at a ceiling. Yeah. And uh, also it's again in the force field of the mother, it hears language, so it, there's a lot of learning going on uh, at this time. Um, and, you know, again, it's protected from negative vibes. Uh, so, yeah, don't take your kids, you know, your, especially your babies to heavy metal concert, you know, or sports events or, you know, wherever there is a lot of, you know, very strong vibration going on. And uh, for similar reasons, uh, you know, uh, also keep them, you know, in your bed and sleeping right next to you, I would say. So keep them, you know, your baby in a crib somewhere in another room and let them cry. Do they give up? It uh, creates abandonment. <laughs> I'm sorry. And uh, also, you know, because little babies, you know, their force field is not so developed yet. I mean, they're very psychic. They can still look into the astral world. Um, you know, many times they get attacked by ghosts. And uh, so, and it's when there are no parents there or when the parents tell them, you know, you're just making this up. This is a horrible trauma. I, I deal with this again with my clients, you know, all the time. Uh, so ghosts and as well as abductions are real 
you know, kids can still see into the astral and, you know, and there are monsters there or, you know, there are shapeshifters there that like to scare, you know, the kids and then harvest that fear. This energy, you know, this chi gives them like a high, right? And so it takes your kids serious when they're telling you, you know, about monster coming off the cabinets. Uh, because so many of my clients, you know, got abducted, you know, and felt abandoned when they shared their scary secrets. And then they shut down their psychic abilities, you know, in fear, instead of developing them, you know, or ask adults for help, you know, and support. Um, so very important. So. <coughs> Um, also, before we get into the guided meditation, I'll find out some principles that I found will support the success of any guided meditation. Um, for instance, um, you know, uh, because we will be accessing, let's say, secret or hidden knowledge, you know, I advise if you have obsidian, you know, which is a glass like thing, this is a snowflake obsidian, you know, here. It's a little like obsidian ball, you know, um, and uh, but the real sweethearts, of course, are rainbow obsidians. Um, so uh, obsidian is good. Uh, any uh, tourmaline, you know, black tourmaline is very good, you know, to some pull out trauma. And uh, of course, selenite is also. It's a lot cheaper. Not as powerful, but you know you can use it too. And for the heart, you know rose quartz, or you know any pink stone. But rose quartz, you know, is quite cheap. You know, just go for the pinkest one. Um, and uh, yeah, if you get spaced out or have cold feet, you just uh, get hematite, which is iron, natural iron, or magnetite, which is natural, you know. Uh, magnets, iron that is magnetized, you know, put those in your socks. And uh, quartz crystals, you know, this is uh, kind of a really nice piece, uh, Russian Lemurian. Uh, you know, you just put them in your hands, you know, put your thumb on a facet, have the bottom out. So, let's say, you know, you could have your hands loaded, uh, or you know you have one obsidian, one quartz crystal. You know, so you can play around whatever feels natural to you. You know, it's no hard and fast rules. Um, and <coughs> also uh, find out about divine symbol if you really want to jack it up another twenty percent. So I use this all the time. I have some videos out on that. It's called the Platonic Solid Symbol. Um, you know, use apply this also. Um, uh, another one is anointing chakras with essential oils. You know, like uh, you know l lavender. You know, for your crown. You know, anything on the violet vibration will be fine. You know, or like a rose oils and a rose oils on the heart chakras front and back, and chili oil to the root chakra. No, no, don't put, don't do that. Uh, <laughs> uh, that would uh, uh, burn. Uh, so, <coughs> nothing on the root chakra. Uh, but um, you can also, you know, drink a chamomile tea instead of coffee. You know, this will soothe you out. Uh, then you take a bath before. Uh, that's very, very nice. So you're going to be very relaxed and more purified. A lot more, a lot more calm, you know, in the mind, and uh, of course, you know, you use a smudge to cleanse yourself, especially if you haven't taken a bath or power, you know, or some high-end incense like uh, for such a Sai Baba Nak Champa, you know, it's uh, tough to be that one, and. Uh, uh, of course, also a massage, you know, by a high vibration massage therapist, you know, can help you a lot. Just make sure you're not somebody that, you know, is, has a shiny face, not somebody that does eight people a day and doesn't do any purification, you know, they can contaminate you. And of course, you know, if you know yoga, do yoga, 
and if you, <laughs> you know, and if you can do breath of fire, <laughs> you know, do that for five, ten, fifteen minutes, and you're really going to be cruising. So let's start with the guided meditation. So sit in a comfortable office chair and uh, balance your body so that everything stacks up nicely. Uh, this is a because it's very difficult to enjoy bliss uh, when you know your back hurts and that's also you know slumping is always a sign of low energy uh, some of you may go uh, deeper you know when they lay down but that has the danger of falling asleep personally I prefer to be sitting you know straight and do the Sufi grind so like slightly swaying you know you adjust your head and neck as needed you know especially when the kundalini comes up you probably have to do some readjustments and also you know it gives me a better you know vertical connection from the heavens and to the earth you know when i lay down it's not that strong um, also you know use uh, nice earbuds or headphones to cancel out outside distraction of course, no, very important, especially if you listen to a podcast, do not drive or operate heavy machinery. You know, people get so spaced out, uh, so uh, do not do that. I mean, that's on yourself, and uh, you know, there will be a lot of guilt when you hurt somebody besides yourself. Um, <coughs> also, um, you know, smile uh, like an idiot. So uh, that, you know, uh, this, you know, smiling opens you up to love and, you know, love is the higher vibration and so you can't really get into the higher vibration solidly unless, you know, you smile or you come from a love frequency. <laughs> you know, you hit a ceiling <laughs> otherwise really fast. Also, uh, initially, you know, breathe at a pace so that you can hear the air flowing through your nostril to, you know, to clear the energy and chakra systems, you know, that is most likely clogged up with you, you know, unless you, you know, do uh, like, you know, some exercise, some yoga with heavy breathing uh, or some jogging, uh, you know, you probably your chakras are going to be sluggish. And so you have to breathe, you know, hard you know, to push through, you know, and cleanse and charge yourself, right? So, <laughs> and all the way in and all the way out. Da, 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 da. <laughs> Yeah, you know, you keep doing this, you can build a nice range of uh, volume of air pumping. Mm -hmm. And you don't have to, you do not have to repeat my affirmations. Just think or say Amen or uh, uh, nod your head or say yes um, or so be it. Um, that's up to you, your belief system. But you know the important thing is that you are aligned you know that you yes this is what i want that is the thing uh, because those higher beings you know respect you know your free will at least the nice ones do and also you know we ask a lot of questions and uh, generally we start with yes or no and then you know most or many of you will automatically get more sophisticated answers and um so but and many times, you know, uh, when I work with clients one on one, it's like, yeah, they get something, but it doesn't make any sense. Now, uh, generally, it makes sense, but just as they just don't know how, <laughs> uh, because they don't have the experience. Uh, and uh, so, uh, at the time, you know, when you are, you know, communicating with those different aspects, just stay in a childlike state of innocence. And you know, smile and reside in the heart. You know, not in the head. As soon as you start, how is this possible? And uh, then you're in the head, and then you know you're not getting proper information anymore. Then it's contaminated many times by your own biases and prejudices. So, 
<clears throat> you know, stay in the heart and just pay attention, you know, what pops into your mind, you know, even if it doesn't make sense in the moment, you know. Uh, but that you can always, at the end of the meditation, you know, uh, you can, you know, rationalize and, you know, check out further. Maybe explore with the pendulum or kinesiology. Um, <clears throat> also, you know, when you have warm hands, and many of you have probably done, you know, um, like practices like Qigong or Reiki, you know, um, especially when you lay down, you know, put one hand, you know, especially the right hand over your heart and then the other on your solar plexus. Um, otherwise, you know, when you sit up, just have them rest, you know, in your on your lap with either with crystals. If you have no crystals, you know, for the women, just kind of slightly cup the ovaries, or uh, you know, just have your fingers kind of crossed. It's not that important. Um, so now we're gonna uh, close your eyes. And we start, we will connect now, and everything that we connect now will be organic. And when we say organic, I mean no artificial overlays. Um, there are a lot of artificial overlays, you know, through uh, culture, through words, word fields, um, through like electromagnetic uh, technology, um, for instance, over the sunlight, um, you could. Uh, you know, some you know, kind of pulse waves, um, um, like things created by harp, you know, or chemtrails, you know, they are all kind of different levels, or even certain type of magic. There are all kinds of uh, ways through which artificial overlays are made. Um, and so we, you know, ask source to, you know, by step for us, so we can connect to the real thing, the organic thing, the way it was supposed to be by Creator. Amen. Um, <laughs> and uh, now we connect to absolute source. You know, nothing higher, nobody higher, more original, absolute source. And of course, everything in the organic aspect again. And uh, also now we connect to our highest self and to our spirit guides all the way up to source so angels and very high dimensional beings right next to creator are all involved if they're there and as a more local representation of source we connect to the organic aspect of milky way galaxy anything from third fourth fifth sixth dimensional aspects or even higher depending on your soul and the same for the earth and the sun and the elements here on earth and the directions north, south, east, west, up, down and the direction inside and all the beings that still love us unconditionally thank you for coming, Amen and I ask that everything that happens in them from this session here is going to be for the highest good in divine harmony with the most benevolent outcomes. Amen. I also ask that there is no deception, and that we are completely safe, absolutely safe, and that everything integrates with great ease in our life. Mm -hmm. Amen. And now, smile like an idiot and extend, you know, your roots into the earth, just shapeshift your legs into deep roots. And then the same with your spine. And allow the love of Mother Earth to flow up through those roots, through the legs and your spine, into your heart, all the way, all the way up to the head. And then on the exhale, you send your energy from the head down back into the roots, into the earth, exhaling deep, smiling like an idiot, and then you pull Mother Earth's love into your heart, 
into the head and then all the way down. out. I call this running love, this back and forth, so start running love with Mother Earth back and forth. And while you're running love with Mother Earth, we ask that any blocks that are there, you know, um, that disconnect you from the Earth Mother, please be cleared now. Amen, 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 amen. Mm -hmm. And uh, some of you may feel quite a boost in the energy, so just keep on breathing. And now we ask our higher spirit guides to also clear any blocks and resistances from our spine and our crown chakras now. Amen. And now put the tongue to the palate and on the exhale, you know, you send that love that you pulled up from the earth mother, you know, all the way into the heart, out the top of the head, you know, all the way to the ceiling. Just keep pushing into the ceiling. This will take some, you know, good extended breaths. And smile like an idiot. Mm -hmm. And some of you, you know, that head starts tingling and you feel tingles all over. And now we ask the heavens, this is your spirit guides, your soul, and anybody that loves you unconditionally. Maybe the angels love you, huh? Then we ask them to pour, you know, their love into you. And now, amen, 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 and to me too, yeah? Amen, 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 amen. And start inhaling this love that's coming down from the heavens into your whole body. And on the exhale, you know, you send it all the way up to the ceiling, you know, and you imagine that Milky Way galaxy is there, you know, so. Inhale and then push it all the way out the head to the whole Milky Way galaxy. This will connect you to your higher dimensional consciousness. Mm -hmm. And now, so we allow the cosmos to spill down over you and through you, your head, your shoulders and your heart through the arms, hands, your legs, and your feet, and then deep, 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 deep into the earth. And we ask that these waves of love coming down onto us be cleansing and healing. And now we ask Source and Archangel Michael or anybody else who is qualified like Lord Shiva for those of the Hindu traditions to remove as much as possible any Anunnaki, Draco, Grey magicians or any other predatory courts and technologies or devices from every level of our being, any incarnation, time or dimensions now for the highest good and divine harmony with the most benevolent outcomes. Amen. And wherever we did, you know, similar stuff to others in other incarnations, uh, we ask that that be cleared too. Amen, 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 amen. And smile and, you know, now just keep pumping, you know, the love from the earth, mother, as well as the heavens into your heart. On the inhale and on the exhale, you just send it and expand your heart. Mm -hmm. And let that beautiful liquid light coming in, you know, from heaven and earth dissolve any blocks that you find in your heart, any darkness and any pain and just smile like an idiot. Mm -hmm. And now, you know, we ask your highest consciousness to kind of be in front of you. 
So this could be a male or female kind of goddess-like thing, or this could be radiance, you know, something, you know, non-corporal. <laughs> Uh, it's like a ball of light, you generally oval, or um, you might just feel a presence. Mm -hmm. And so we uh, want to make sure it's definitely us, so I'll just put a column of violet light on it, whatever you feel or see. And if it squirms, it's probably not what we ask for. If you ask Archangel Michael to, you know, clear that out and, you know, connect us to the real thing. Amen. Uh, but if it likes the violet light, you know, start running love with it. You know, inhale, you know, the love from your high self. And on the exhale, you send your love from your heart. You know, so just go back and forth. And now uh, we, uh, you know, just ask, uh, you know, for a yes or no code. So let's assume that a yes is a flow of energy from the heart to the head. And a no would be a flow of energy from the heart to the feet. So let us ask the high self to give us a yes, no, amen. And for many, you know, you probably feel kind of an upflow. For some, it's very slight. Maybe some of you feel nothing. Uh, just ask your high self to give you a much stronger yes. So there is no doubt in your mind. So let's ask for another yes now. Amen. If you have problems here, you know, just pause the video and uh, uh, just, uh, you know, ask it to make it stronger till you can feel it. Mm -hmm. And now let's just ask the high self to give you a no, a clear no. It means, you know, energy from heart to the feet. Please give me a no now. Amen. And if you couldn't feel it, ask one more time to give it to you much stronger now. Amen. All right. And now let's uh, call on the high self of your mother. All right. Uh, in front of you now. Amen. And this is uh, maybe your goddess aspect, maybe it looks like your mother, maybe more idealized. Uh, maybe it's a radiant thing, doesn't matter. So just start taking love from heaven and earth. And on the exhale, you know, send this from your heart to your mother's heart. Now, mm -hmm. So we just offer her love from heaven and earth. And, you know, see how she looks like when we can see her. Is she smiling? Is she unhappy? Mm -hmm. And let's ask, you know, Mama's high self or your own high self, it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. Are there any outstanding, you know, promises and vows from past lifetimes that are still interfering with both of your life? Maybe they are outdated, you know, stuff like this. Yes or no? Mm -hmm. And we ask maybe, you know, the angels if possible, you know, and good for the highest good that they will be cleared now. Amen. And please do the same, you know, um, for contracts, you know, that are still binding um, and that are not good anymore. You know, or sometimes they were black magic contracts, sometimes they were, you know, other vows and contracts. And, uh, you know, many of them become outdated and do not apply for eternity. So do we have contracts like this with our mom? Yes or no?
and then please clear any outdated contracts now. Amen, 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 amen. And now, uh, while this is clearing is going on, let's ask and keep smiling and you know and running love with your high selves. Are there any spells and curses, you know, between mom and you? So did you uh, spell and curse your mom or did she do it to you in past lifetime? Yes or no? Uh-huh. And <laughs> I can actually remember from this lifetime, but <clears throat> so uh, we asked that, you know, the cosmic Christ, you know, the kind aspects of source, please clear those, you know, from both sides. Amen, 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 amen. And as we are already there, just ask that you be kind of shown in your mind, and this will probably be through memory, you know, where, you know, you taste the results, you know, of the curses, you know. Let's be asked to be shown the curses you put on your mom in past lifetimes. How are they panning off out, you know, in this lifetime? Most important. And second most important. And how is the effect on you? you know, from her curses unto you, what's the most important? And then what's the second most important? And now just for fun, uh, let's go back to simple yes and no questions. So are there any divide and conquer spells, you know, that are separating you and your mom, you know, from the past, yes or no? And of course, we like to have those cleared. Amen. Also, is there any karma dumping between you and your mom? You know, where you know there is a magic where you just dump your own bad karma onto others. You know, similar to the painting of Dorian Gray. That story. Mm -hmm. And if there's any karma dumping, we also like to have that cleared. You know, on either way, both directions you know, from the most merciful aspects of God. Amen, 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 amen. Now, let's ask if there are any bindings and, you know, even worse, like bitch and slavery spells. So, you know, there are, of course, love spells, uh, and, you know, then there are uh, worse forms, you know, where you, uh, yeah, make somebody, you know, your bitch, like your prison bitch, so they become, you know, your servant, subservient to you, support you, maybe become your sexual slave or, you know, your groupie. Uh, you know, this would be bitch spells. Uh, and, of course, bindings also, you know, you. Uh, do this to, you know, beautiful women or men that you're attracted to, they can't get away, you know, from you, or things like that. Mm -hmm. So, uh, is there something like this? Has this happened between you and your mom, yes or no? And if yes, yes, we please, 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 please clear this. Amen. And let's ask, are there any ghosts, you know, from past incarnations from your mom's side or from your side that are still having, I like, kind of got stuck, you know, in, through their relationship in some way and that need help, yes or no? And if they're yes, you know, we ask that, um, you know, they've been brought, you know, to sources or the Arcturian, you know, ascension and healing chambers, which will bring them into the highest heavens, you know, that they can go. Uh, please do so now. Amen. And let's just ask some more questions. How many incarnations, you know, did we have with mom as a woman? You know, so where your mother was a woman. Mm -hmm. 
and whatever you know number just pops in just take it on face value it's not that important and how many incarnations did you have where your mom was a man and whatever number just pops into your mind just uh, take this at face value it's just going to give you a, a little overview ultimately. Uh -huh. So, and how many incarnations that you had with your mom, and I always refer to incarnations in human bodies. Um, so, how many of them were friendly? <laughs> uh -huh. And uh, how many of them, you know, uh, were you know, where, where your enemies, where you, you know, abandon each other or, you know, hurt each other. You know, many times when you were lovers, uh, there was a lot of jealousy, many times killing and out of jealousy, uh, quite rough. <laughs> so, and I consider those also enemies, you know, when they're angry at you and hurt you and want to hurt you, you know, these are enemies, you know, even if you have been lovers. Alright, so how many are enemies? And now for some of those, you know, for you, you may get a good answer. So why did we pick these mother? Why? 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 What did we try to learn? And, you know, uh, many of you that are listening to these uh, probably went to, you know, shamanic death. You know, this means lots of trauma early on in life, and then you have to learn how to heal yourself. And, you know, this is why you're watching this video. And when you heal yourself, you know, you can heal others. So this is called the shaman's death. And so, let's see, <laughs> many times again, <laughs> really wounded parents so they can experience the shame of death. This is the case with you, yes or no? Uh huh. And if you had maybe a dysfunctional uh, relationship with your mom where you were abused, I uh, asked whether your relationship is kind of like a karma reversal, where you just, you know, get back what you dished out to her in past lifetimes, yes or no? And now let's go to the topic of cords. You know, cords are energy streams that uh, many people that can look into the astral world see. And these energy streams, they are connect people through their chakras, through their energy centers. And they connect also to places and other beings. And uh, so through those cords, um, you know, their uh, energy can be exchanged. Um, so that's how a mother kind of knows, you know, how her children are doing. You know, they are, uh, are something like a, the mechanics of telepathic contact. You know, so if you have a cord from third eye to third eye, you know, thought transfer well. If you have a cord between heart chakras, you know, love transfer well, so transfer well, and and so on. Yeah, and uh, so. Uh, let's uh, ask that you be shown uh, the most important uh, coding that you have with your mom, you know, the predominant one, you know, between which chakras is this? Is this between heart chakra, solar plexus, etc.? Just just get a general impression. Amen. And let's just have a quick look here. Let's have it's asked that you be shown the connection you have with your mom through the root chakra. Now, amen. And also that you may understand the effect, you know, how it affects her and how it affects you. Mm -hmm. And if the routing, if that is dysfunctional, yeah, we like to have it cleared. Amen, 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 amen. 
and are asked to be shown, you know, the cords effect that you have, you know, with your mom on the sacral chakra, how strong it is, how it affects the both of you. And if it's dysfunctional, we like to have it cleared, you know, cleaned and probably removed. Amen. And now let's ask to be shown the cords, you know, to your mom through the solar plexus. Amen. And also, you know, ask to be shown, you know, how you affect her through these cords and how she affects you through the cords. And ask also, is there any energy being stolen from you or from her, yes or no? And asked how much of your energy you now is stolen by her in general. And asked how much of her energy are you stealing in general. Aha. Uh -huh. So if there's any imbalance, you know, and if it's not for the highest good, you know, whatever is not for the highest good, we like to have cleared and purified. Amen, 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 amen. And uh, let's uh, go and see, you know, the heart chakra. Very important. Uh, how is the connection with your mom's heart chakra? And how does it affect the both of you? <laughs> and now let's uh, check on the throat you know, for, which is for communication, self-expression, you know, divine wisdom expression. Mm -hmm. Is there a connection and how do you affect each other? Also, there can be a lot of energy vampiring through the throat chakra. Ask if this is happening, yes or no. And now I ask that you be also shown the uh, cord connection, you know, that you have through the third eye with your mom. And how is it affecting the both of you? And let's have this also repaired or cleared. And let's ask to be shown, you know, the crown chakra you know, and above, so they extend, you know, <laughs> quite high, quite high. <laughs> the higher you go, the higher the dimension. So, now, Let's just uh, ask again so that any, you know, dysfunctional cords be either cleared, you know, and repaired or just, you know, cleared and detached. Amen. And, uh, you know, just to focus again now here on heaven and earth and pump your heart and rejuvenate your connection with your mom's high self as well as your own high self. You know, just breathe love back and forth between them. And let's just ask, you know, do you yourself, you know, have rejection as an unwanted child? Yes or no? And if yes, uh, there might even, some of you may feel a pain in your heart or somewhere in your body when these questions come up. You know, that's <laughs> generally a good indicator that there is trauma there. Mm -hmm. So if you like to have, you know, any of this 
our trauma please clear and forgive our mom amen and it's also <laughs> the rejection of maybe being the wrong gender yes or no and you like to have all the guilt around this and all the hurt around this cleared as well as the karma amen amen And is there any anger and hostility between you from past lifetimes? You know, yes or no. And these are mostly ghosts, so yes or no. All right, and we like to have that cleared uh, as much as possible. We give forgiveness and ask for forgiveness. Amen. Now, is there any sadness or depression, you know, coming from your mom to you? You know, all through the genetic lines, you know, the family lines, yes or no? And let's have that cleared, you know, amen, 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 as much as possible without having to look at details, amen, amen. And is mom, you know, making up for injustice she did to you in the past, yes or no? And let's just, if yes, you know, forgive her and set her free. Now, if she wants to serve you, it should be voluntarily, but that's your own, that's your own decision, right? <laughs> now, ask her whether there is a generational curse on the female line coming down onto you, yes or no? And if yes, you know, if you ask, you like Cosmic Christ, Archangel Michael, Lord Shiva, Lord Ganesh, you know, or others according to your tradition, you know, to please transmute those curses, you know, all the way out, you know, and wherever you know you and your family cursed others, we like to have that cleared too. Amen, 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 amen. And any beings that got negatively affected by any of those curses, yeah, we like to have cleared from those curses and released, you know, enemy or friend, you know, from whether they're from our line or from others' lines. Let them go, please, into the heavens if possible. Amen, amen. And let's us ask if there are any more other bindings, contract, curses, vows, you know, coming down that female line to you, maybe debts, mm -hmm. entities. And we like to have as much as possible cleared that. And if we did this to others in past lifetimes or our clan did this to others, we like to have that cleared too. Amen, amen. And now some more juicy stuff. So we talked about, you know, transference from your mom, you know, to your wife. <laughs> so, uh, you know, uh, for instance, uh, you know, maybe your mom had a lot of mental diarrhea, you know, and uh, so you got really annoyed and angry about this. Right, and so maybe you transfer this anger of mental diarrhea, you know, onto women in general, or maybe even on your female high self, you know, or Mother Nature in general, or the whole divine goddess energy, you know, in terms of manifestation, you know, like you could consider this, you know, the Maya in Hinduism, or the illusion, or the matrix, you know. Or the manifesting material and the male aspect would be the idea, you know, the idea and the will. And then the female aspect would be the form that manifests the final product in form, in whatever level that is, on whichever level of dimension this is. 
So, you know, we like to have all this transference, you know, that is happening in our life, you know, from our mother experiences cleared, you know, especially from our poor wives, partners, whoever we're projecting this onto. Please, please, please clear this, you know, so, uh, you know, we don't contaminate, you know, and just let us learn the lesson in a much funner way. Amen, 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 amen. So now, please, please, please be with me here. Smile and just nod your head, you know, in agreement, you know. So, spirit, spirit, please release all hooks, devices, chains, and other forms of bindings and limitation, like rings, plates, spikes, spells, curses, contracts, promises, vows, that were put unto me my body, mind, and spirit complex, you know, unto my mother, you know, or what my mother put unto me, you know. That includes structures, thought forms, devices, entities, orientations, or effects associated with these following curses across all incarnations, all space, all parallel realities, parallel universes, alternate realities, alternate universes, all planetary systems, all soul systems, source systems, all dimensions and the void. Now, Amen. And so it is, and so it is, and so it is, and so it is. Also bring all entities that are still stuck in the lower astral into the heavens and then once they are left, clear all the baggage that's still left by them. Amen, 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 amen. And just, you know, run earth love into the heavens, smile like an idiot, you know, breathe and you probably will feel energies leaving you, uplifting. Some of you may start shaking. <laughs> Or have, you know, goosebumps and, you know, waves of energy flowing over you. That's our past of it, path of it. It's, I think it's quite enjoyable. Uh, so don't be scared. You know, it's just, you know, stuff leaving. So that's always good. <laughs> and uh, while this is going on, let's, uh, let's just... Uh, you know, uh, communicate, you know, with your female high self again, just run love with her. And, uh, let's see, you know, let's ask simple questions. Uh, you know, did, let's ask your female high self, you know, uh, did your mother, you know, actually, you know, really support you, you know, through her words, you know, or did she kind of always nag on you, right? Was he kind of, oh, now you can do it, you know, you're tough, you're smart, you will figure it out, or was he, ach, oh God, you can never do this, you know, you're so stupid, you're such a screw-up, you know, you never get anything together, right? So, did she give you enough support, yes or no? Uh-huh, and, you know, if it's a no, um, you know, you asked your high self, you know, to help you, you know, to kind of give words of support to your inner child and to yourself, you know, constantly, you know, like be your own a choir, back choir, or, you know, patting yourself on the shoulder all the time. So, you know, like, well done, and you can do it, you know, you're smart, you know, you're lucky, you know, things like that. Uh -huh. So now let's ask your female high self, you know, whether in her opinion, your mom, you know, did you give you nice gifts, you know, of love and attention, you know, maybe material objects, you know, or was she stingy or Spartan, yes or no? Well, was she stingy and Spartan, yes? Okay, so if she was stingy and Spartan, you know, um, ask your high self, you know, to uh, make sure that you give your inner child, you know, plenty of gifts, you know, just little thing here and there, you know, it can be small, maybe something big, you know, uh, 
Maybe there's this Ford Mustangs or that nice stereo system, right? So who knows? Okay. Now, let's ask uh, your female high self whether, you know, your mom, you know, gave you enough, you consider other services, maybe a massage, you know, or, you know, um, just, you know, took care of you, you know, did things for you when you ask her for you. And if you did it not, you know, ask your own high self to help you to provide services to yourself, you know. <laughs> when you do things just for yourself, not only for others, but also for yourself, you know, go get yourself that nice massage or do yourself, you know, a nice yoga session mm -hmm. or have that, you know, specially good food, yes. Mm -hmm. Now ask another question, uh, did you have enough quality time with your mom, yes or no? And if no, you know, make it a point that you have plenty of quality time, you know, with yourself and your loved ones, you know, give yourself that what your mom didn't give you. Mm -hmm. Amen. And. Uh, now ask whether, you know, your mom, you know, gave you enough touch, you know, or was she a rather distant person? So was, did she give you enough touch, yes or no? And if she did not, uh, well, you know, just look for physical closeness. You know, I would say whether it's anything from cozy blankets, you know, to snuggling up, to self-massage, you know, or other pleasures, uh, you know, just, you know, supply yourself with that what you did not get to your mom. Mm -hmm. Promise your inner child, you know, right now. Amen. And so, uh, well, uh, some of those mothers, they are really expert masters at nagging. And, you know, they have really uh, destructive uh, mantras. <laughs> like, we can take you nowhere, <laughs> or you're so dumb. So, let's just ask, in, according to your high self, you know, which is the most destructive mantra that your mom used on you? Amen. And ask for the counter mantra now. Amen. And ask what is the second most destructive mantra that your mom always gave you. Amen. Right, and what is the counter mantra for that that you're supposed to repeat to yourself? All right, now let's ask for some healing and let us invoke uh, the inner child of your mom. That's your mom as a little girl, four to six years old. Uh -huh. And start, yeah, you might see her, you might just remember her from a picture, or it's just maybe very blurry, or just feel her presence, it doesn't really matter that much. And just take love from heaven and earth and send it from your heart to the heart of your inner child, of your mom. Just be nice to her. Deep breathing, smile like an idiot, you don't want to scare the kid. Okay, and now run a uh, call on mom's inner teen, you know. Amen. And run some love on her. <laughs> run some love on her. 
make you feel good. So if your mother is not alive anymore, you know, so we ask, uh, you know, if there's a ghost from her, we call on that one, or if she already ascended, so we ask on that ascended aspect of her, you know, to come down, to be in front of us now, amen. And now again, take love from heaven and earth and project it on your mom. And, you know, if she uh, came from the heavens, there's probably a lot of love coming back from her, very pure. Just ask, whoever is there, you know, are you in heaven or not? Are you in heaven, yes or no? And, uh, if she is not in heaven yet, we ask that she be brought into the heaven by the cosmic Christ. Amen, amen, amen. Now you invoke that aspect of your mom when she was pregnant with you. Amen. And just, you know, she can come in any time of that pregnancy, you know advisably when she wasn't feeling that great and just run a lot of healing love onto her just you know pump love from heaven and earth onto her it's gonna get to her smile like an idiot and breathe like a bellow give her that extra chi and it probably is gonna get to the core of your own being because there is no separation in time on the astral And you probably want to now ask your female high self whether you were an accident or when you were you planned. And ask what was your mom's greatest sacrifice, you know, for you. Did she give up a career? Or did she marry the wrong guy because she had to get a provider? What was the biggest sacrifice? Appreciate that. Send her love for that. Thank her for that. Taken one for you. And what's the second greatest sacrifice she did for you? Mm -hmm. And thank her for that too. Amen. Be grateful. Don't be shy. Now ask, you know, what is the biggest disappointment you brought <laughs> in your life? <laughs> Let's face the truth. And I asked your female high self, according to her point of view, what is your biggest disappointment, you know, or disapproval of your parents, of your mom? Amen. And ask where that came from. You know, maybe something conditioned her to act like that. You know, maybe a new perspective for you now. Amen. Now we give forgiveness, you know, because we blame our parents for all kinds of stuff. <laughs> and so just let's forgive that, you know. Amen, 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 as much as possible. Amen, amen, amen. You know, if you can do this mantra, I forgive my parents for anything I don't like. They've done their best because their attention was to give their best. One more time. I forgive my parents for anything I don't like. They have done their best because their intention was to give their best. Amen.
another mantra we can do now. Uh, if they could do better, they would have done better. If she could have done better, she would have done better. Mm -hmm. Amen. And now we asked uh, whether we actually, you know, um, got any psychic abilities from the female line. You know, the psychic abilities generally travel with the women. And did you get any? Yes or no? And if yes, you know, thank. And so we also asked that these be activated as much as possible for you now for the highest benefit for you and of course the world also. Amen, 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 amen. And now we thank all the beings that helped us, uh, to you know, giving insight, uh, helped us ascend beings, clear curses, etc. And if there's still any energies or entities that need to be cleared, please do so now. Amen. And if there are any portals that need to be opened or closed or guarded or reversed into good portals and benevolent portals or that need repaired, uh, please do so now. Amen. And one, uh, you come back into your body and all your subtle bodies align perfectly and you get, you know, supplemented with golden healing light. And two, you open your eyes and you're awaken, and back in vacant day consciousness. Amen, 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 amen. So my friends, uh, this was a shotgun meditation and I will probably not clear all curses on you. Uh, so much of the time you will have to do this guided meditation just as you would uh, regularly take pills or teas, you know. Uh, most of you had lots of incarnations with your mother and uh, clearing also, you know, depends on your insight, you know, on lessons learned, level of forgiveness and of course, you know, the gravity of the trauma. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, many issues have to be looked at in greater detail before they can be released. Uh, that is when a lesson or insight is needed, uh, you know, before the trauma can be transmuted. You know, the insight is just like homework you gotta do, you know. Uh, good parents help with the homework, but don't, you know, do it all, right? And of course, uh, that is where a private session, you know, with me, you know, will be very helpful, you know, so take it while you still can. Um, so, you know, because I can guide you, I have a lot of experience with this, and of course I'm holding space. And uh, so, but in general, cleansing, you know, the cleansing that you're going through will take its time. But then on the other hand, you know, this is definitely, time has speeded up and uh, a lot of really heavy duty stuff, you know, is, is happening in really, really short time. So, uh, you know, uh, <laughs> you're probably going at a breakneck speed. Um, so, you know, if you responded well to this guided meditation, uh, chances are that you also respond well to my other guided meditation. Duh! Right, so take advantage of that. Uh, I have about 150 of those, so, you know, pick what you get attracted to. Uh, of course, you know, um, you, know you will meet your limitation at a certain time and you know that is when you want to overcome that you know it's time to come to me <laughs> and i will help you over the hump right um, i have a lot of experience with this so uh you know um, share your experiences uh, with the forum here you know these are your type of people and you can help them with, with sharing and you know I'm happy to answer you any questions you have um, you know keep in touch with me you know give me feedback or um, I love to hear any meditations um, that you would like to have 
um, you know, um, I always like love feedback. It's very important. Um, so, you know, sometimes I know, oh, yeah, this is a great idea, and I just go for it. So, you know, just pitch stuff, and when it resonates, I'm going to do it. Right? Uh, so if you want a session, you know, send me a private email. You know, address is here. Uh, for my ratings, uh, you know, do the cyber stuff. You know, ring the bell, subscribe, give thumbs up and whatever else you can do. I love you. Namaste.